Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, we're very fortunate today to have Professor Bejan, who uh, grew up in Romania mm -hmm. under communism for the first 20 years of his life. Uh, he was also a uh, basketball player, and quite a good basketball player, unlike me, he was a mediocre basketball player. Very tough. <laughs> Um, he attended MIT all the way through his PhD and eventually landed at Duke University uh, as a physics professor, also uh, mechanical engineer, uh, which is what he's doing now. And he's written many, many books. One of them is Freedom and Evolution. So Dr. Bijan understands the lack of freedom and he knows how important freedom is to evolution. Um, he has some very deep insights in life, and he's one of those rare persons that has a beautiful, strong intellect, but he's also well-grounded, and he even talks about physics in terms of being common sense. So welcome, Dr. or Professor Bajan. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Levy, and uh, thank you for uh, coming to uh, this lecture today. The, uh, the material that I put together was inspired um, um, by Mr. Luddy, but um, especially by the words that he speaks. Uh, first, um, Thales, which in the Greek is pronounced uh, Thales, in French, uh, Thale, or Thales. Um, uh, this is a, uh, an important um, personality and uh, way of thinking. And then, um, you see in the top line, uh, my main objective is to um, to uh, act as if I was living in this era when geometry was just taking place. Very little was known, but what was known was uh, proven to be true. Uh, that material of uh, proven uh, truth uh, was a set of uh, very few theorems. Theorems are um, statements that uh, uh, are true, but if you don't believe that they are true, you are free to um, question them and then free to discover them um, that they are true. So uh, science grew from uh, geometry. But uh, the lecture today is uh, really about uh, Adrian uh, putting himself in, uh, in the shoes of somebody living in, during the golden era of Greece and uh, trying to build a, uh, a, uh, an edifice with, uh, not exactly with straws, but with, um, with twigs and other simple uh, objects that are evident to common man. You see? That's the, um, the, the beginning. And then, uh, in the second line, I have a, a few words that uh, the, uh, the, this uh, uh, traveler who is observant and goes uh, into the wilderness to discover things on his own, discoveries such as geometry, which is the discipline, uh, the concept of the infinity, uh, I'll tell you about that, fundamentals, what that means, and uh, freedom as well. You see, in fact, uh, the whole lecture is about uh, the, uh, the um, importance of the observer as uh, he or she walks through life to, uh, to observe uh, freely, which means uh, unconstrained. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, how uh, to discover things on your own? Well, uh, the answer is very simple, by questioning. Questioning everything, what you observe, what you hear, what other people say, to question particularly uh, everything and everybody. Now, that is a full-time job, so I'm not uh, preaching that, uh, uh, because not everything that you observe is, uh, is worth uh, contemplating. But every once in a while, uh, say 1% of your time, uh, keep your eyes open and your ears uh, straight up like those of the, uh, of the antelope. Get it? Um, it is important to question, in fact, uh, all of you, if you, I see you are very quiet, but if you uh, hear something that's not clear, 
uh, raise your hand and uh, we'll talk about your, uh, the point that you want to make. The point is that uh, you should not be afraid to question uh, because you see you may be right. And if you're right, then everybody, including uh, with, uh, starting with you, everybody benefits. Um, and don't be too sure about your idea because you may be wrong. But that means that uh, while uh, discovering that you're wrong, next time you are better trained. So it's okay to fail while trying, so the next time you play better. And uh, act as if you are free. You are actually brought up with uh, various uh, rules of behavior, which uh, from the uh, good parents are very good rules. However, however, along the way, uh, practice this, uh, this uh, habit of uh, being yourself, which means to act according to your own uh, ideas, which, which means w w according to your own mental viewings. And um, sometimes it's difficult to do this, but uh, very important is to, to practice. To practice what is what's good. All right, let's see what <clears throat> comes next. Silas, so you already know, because I saw his uh, portrait uh, in various places in this uh, building. I don't know, uh, yeah, thank you, I'll move around. <clears throat> um, he was a, a free man. Uh, he had uh, wealth and had people around him, also free men working uh, the land. And he did a lot of thinking and writing. And uh, that's uh, himself uh, at the top, says uh, um, Thales of um, Miletus. Miletus, to this day, is a city on the um, west, uh, western coast of um, Asia Minor. It's right here, Miletus. In uh, Turkey today, it's called Milet, which is also the modern name in all the languages of Europe. And um, what you have uh, here is the, the map of, uh, of a civilization in, uh, during the golden era of Greece. The, uh, the red uh, spots are uh, Greek colonies. The Greeks were uh, uh, moving by sea. They were seafarers. And um, they were building cities on the coast that they touched. You look, for example, at, uh, well, <laughs> there are two things to observe here. One is that uh, writing, and you'll see soon geometry and science was flourishing everywhere. everywhere. This is 600 years before Christ. You also see that the, um, the perimeter of the sea that was uh, completely uh, touched by civilization was the Black Sea. The Mediterranean was uh, uh, touched only partially. You also see uh, that uh, the so-called uh, Western civilization that today people associate with uh, Western Europe was in fact uh, <clears throat> not just wilderness but um, savagery, uh, total forest, uh, land covered by forests, um, far from civilized. Uh, from here, uh, people gave the impression to those who are writing that uh, the people north of them were barbarians. And uh, not only that, but the, um, the uh, science that started to develop was developing primarily from the eastern half of this particular map. And it was not uh, uh, all the Greek made. A lot of it had come earlier from, from this region, which was uh, Phoenicia and the Palestine, the, um, of course, uh, Egypt, Mesopotamia, today is Iraq, and Persia. This is the, uh, the, the culture that, uh, that uh, gave us the beginnings of uh, geometry, astronomy, mathematics, and uh, soon after what uh, I'm telling you today, uh, algebra, which came with the, uh, <coughs> with the Arab population from North Africa. The, um, The main point is that uh, as you're learning uh, science, the principle is one thing, but behind it stands, uh, stand individuals. Is the name uh, given today for, um, for uh, this uh, peninsula, which is uh, also known as Anatolia in uh, today's map. 
um, never mind minor. The name of that was Asia. Asia. The, um, the people, the civilized people, were actually writing their observations, saw this land uh, to the east, and called it Asia, which means Asia. Later, when people uh, managed to learn more, more about the space uh, on the surface of the Earth, they discovered that this uh, landmass was uh, massive, so that name Asia was ex uh, exported to the major mass, and the original one became uh, Asia Minor. In the beginning, Asia was big, as big as it would be observed by the inhabitants of the civilized coast. If there is time, and if uh, you would like to know, uh, ask me what is the origin of the name Africa? A very a similar story. Okay. <clears throat> so I begin with uh, Thales' theorem. It is uh, the statement that um, uh, if, uh, if a triangle is inscribed in a circle such that one of its sides is a diameter, and this drawing BC is the diameter, then the angle uh, at the uh, remaining uh, point is a right angle. A right angle, we'll see very soon, is the angle that's not uh, too sharp and not too blunt. Sharp is this. Uh, so it's called an acute uh, uh, angle, and uh, an angle like this is obtuse. I wrote here, <coughs> acute doesn't mean acute, okay? Acute means uh, sharp, because acutus in Latin means um, something that has a sharp point like a needle, you see? And obtusus in uh, Latin means uh, a... Uh, something that has a point that's uh, not sharp, uh, a uh, blunted point. You see here, a language, language develops hand in hand with scientific knowledge. I don't know which one uh, comes first. Sometimes uh, scientific uh, knowledge uh, outpaces the language. <coughs> Other times, the language is older, like uh, the needle and the blunt. And uh, those who come up with science uh, use the words that are already in circulation. Okay, <clears throat> so the theorem says that, uh, as I just uh, pointed out, that, that at A, the angle should be a right angle. I'll define right angle a little bit later. Uh, I'll also define 90 degrees a little bit later. These are names uh, for uh, words uh, adopted by convention. Now, science, which I just mentioned, is uh, another one of these words that was already uh, spoken by uh, uh, normal people, meaning people in the, on the streets and in the fields. Uh, it means scientia, in Latin means uh, knowledge. Uh, pretty clear, uh, the difference between knowing and not knowing, it's good to have. Geometry, the way the, the word, the uh, became the name for this um, uh, mental activity, means uh, the activity of measuring the land. Uh, geo means the earth in Greek, and metrici uh, means measure or measurement. Uh, you get the point. The uh, landowner needs to know. Uh, so. Now, uh, triangles. Uh, the triangle uh, mentioned in the Thales theorem is, uh, doesn't come out of the, uh, the blue sky. Uh, it was discovered much earlier. earlier. Uh, prehistoric people <coughs> knew about uh, lines, you know, uh, sc scratching the, uh, the wet sand with a twig. So you have the freedom to, uh, to draw a line in any direction you want. Also, okay, just like the cut uh, one makes with the, uh, with the falling uh, sword, that is a line. You can uh, take a second cut at a different, in a different direction. Those are two lines that intersect themselves. This is what people discover angles. And then if you uh, make uh, three cuts, um, then uh, one, two, and three, between them appears this drawing. 
and the drawing is a triangle. Triangle because it has uh, three uh, corners. Um, and um, but the point is that in uh, in making the lines, you are in fact uh, showing the, to, you, to the to the world your freedom in in uh, making a sketch or a drawing. And this word any is extremely important. Any is synonymous with your freedom to decide where you put the lines of the image. And that's why, that's how we arrive at triangles, which is this uh, mo most general drawing in which the corners, the angles are not specified. Next, if uh, two of those angles are of the same size, the triangle is called isosceles. And if all angles uh, are equal to each other, then that very special or most special triangle is equilateral. Equilateral equi is the uh, Latin word for that gave birth to e equal and equality. That's easy. And lateral <coughs> means side. So uh, equilateral means uh, equal sides. But isosceles does not mean uh, uh, two equal sides. It means uh, two equal legs. Legs, like uh, the angle between my legs, you see, is isosceles. Or from a distance, if you're a poor uh, draftsman, you draw the sketch of the Eiffel Tower as an isosceles angle. Get it? And uh, <clears throat> so, this is how the, the language of, uh, of, the, of the demonstration of the theorem uh, develops. Here's that uh, any triangle that uh, I already sketched, A, B, C. And now, because uh, I get the feeling that uh, uh, I like images, and uh, making drawings is like, uh, like uh, drinking a good wine. Uh, after the first uh, glass, you'll, uh, you'll try the second, and then the third. And uh, in that direction, you end up with a construct something more complicated. In this construct, you make amazing discoveries. Just look at it. The same triangle, once, twice, three times, and so on. Here, in this location, these three angles, A, B, C, A, B, C, uh, are of, of such sizes that together they make this segment be collinear with this segment. So the angle, which is the sum of A, B, and C, is so obtuse that its sides are collinear. And now you discover that the most obtuse uh, angle is, in fact, the uh, other name for the straight line. So you have a straight line here and a straight line here, plus your technique of making the two lines, which is one of separating the top and bottom lines uh, by a distance that is the same no matter how far you go to the right. You see? And uh, you discover that um, these two straight lines will never touch, will never meet. The name for those two straight lines that never meet is parallel lines. And you knew nothing before uh, this particular uh, lecture about parallel lines. You just discovered them from a construction that began with your freedom of making an any triangle. I have to tell you that if you read the today's scientific literature, the uh, highest minds uh, in that domain struggle with the concept of infinity. What does it mean? Well, I know what infinity means. Uh, it's a noun uh, coming from Latin. It means the, the endless, the endless. Yeah, but what is the physics basis? Where is the meat in this, uh, let's say, the basis of this concept? Well, you already discovered that. Uh, infinity is the name for your freedom of imagining this drawing proceeding to the right farther and farther. If the parallel lines have not gone 
far enough to the right, you have the freedom to tell your critic, oh, don't worry, <laughs> just don't worry, I can add more of my triangles here in the same way so that these lines will never meet. You see? So this is how freedom pops up in, um, in um, say, the heart of the scientist who wants to sleep uh, well at night. Uh, it's not, uh, um, I meaning infinity, comes from there. And it's uh, very, very clear and uh, normal and common. Uh, something else you'll see very soon in connection with this um, oblique line XX. But uh, I make the observation that uh, discovering parallel lines is actually a big deal. A really big deal, meaning when they were uh, discovered in antiquity, uh, they uh, popped up as if out of nowhere because in human life, in the human field of vision, parallel lines do not exist. You may think that you're looking, for example, Adrian at this table in front of you, that has these two parallel uh, uh, sides. But what I see, what I see is not, is not uh, a pair of lines that uh, are of the kind that I sketched. Uh, the human vision is equipped with a, uh, with a third mechanism, which is in the brain. It is the, uh, the uh, what I call the knowledge that um, uh, one object, the same object, that is far looks small, and what, the same object that's close uh, is act, looks big. And this is why the image has depth. The uh, highway, which is of course a set of uh, parallel lines, uh, is tapered. Uh, the way that you perceive it, for the same matter, uh, uh, for the same reason, the car, if it were right in front of you, would look much bigger. This is in the in the mind, and this is how uh, perceiving a an image that's uh, um, void of parallel lines gives the brain uh, the information that in fact, in fact, there is a third dimension to the image, which is called the depth, also known as perspective. Next, um, I go to um, the promised uh, discussion here with the, um, with the uh, slice uh, taken through the parallel lines. <coughs> it's expanded here at the bottom. Uh, the drawing gets more complicated. And um, you have uh, two angles here on the upper side of the um, <coughs> upper straight line, alpha and beta. They're called complementary angles. And because the continuous line is the most obtuse uh, uh, angle, then alpha and beta add up to 180 degrees. Now, 180 degrees is a name. It is a, a piece of writing uh, that uh, everybody recognizes as a matter of convention. 180 degrees, also known as pi, is uh, a... Um, uh, the name for for this widest widest uh, angle, where the 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 largest uh, number of directions in which the eye could look at this point to the right, up, and to the left. You see, the same holds for alpha and beta on the uh, underside of the uh, straight lines, which means that uh, if there is no um, line, but simply a point, the, if you are there, uh, looking in all the directions available to you, you will see an angle of 360 degrees. So 360 degrees, or 2 pi, is uh, uh, one way of uh, telling your counterpart that your field of vision is uh, the broadest uh, possible in two dimensions, which is what I have here on this uh, screen. 360. 360, you probably, you may have observed this uh, number in uh, advertisements. Uh, some companies uh, include 360 in their, uh, in their um, you know, uh, uh, claims to suggest to the educated uh, viewer that uh, this company has the broadest, uh, whatever, reach or outlook or impact. So keep in mind here, the difference between convention or labeling and the drawing. What really matters in, uh, in uh, thinking 
is the image, the drawing, uh, that occurs to you in the quiet of your mind. From there, a little bit later, comes the design, the invention, the, um, the new idea, the audacity to speak, and all these other things that uh, characterize civilized uh, man. Let's see what next. We've already uh, established that the sum of the angles uh, in a triangle is uh, fixed. It's called 180 degrees. We decided that. But now there are spe uh, three special cases. If two of these angles, B and C, are shrinking to nothing, which means that A, the, 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 the apex, is descending, then, that's the top line, then A becomes that the most of two's angle of 180 degrees. That is, the, the two sides of uh, angle A become collinear. Okay? So that's the first uh, special case of the top line. Second special case, which is shown here, in the opposite direction, if A uh, tends towards zero, for becoming infinitely sharp, then the sum of B and C has to be 180, because A is zero. And then finally, if uh, this is the most special case, if A is zero, and then B and C are equal to each other, that's the case on the rightmost uh, sketch, then both uh, angle B and C, each of them, have 90 degrees meaning angle B is a right angle, and, which is another name, and angle C is also a right angle. Why right? Why a right angle? And now you get to a, a very important point in, uh, in scientific thought. The right angle is the angle that's not too sharp and not too obtuse. It's the one that's Right in the middle. You got you heard the word right? A right angle. A right angle is a compromise between the sharpest and the and the dullest. Okay? Compromise. Uh, the right angle is not the optimum. Optimum means the best, the chosen. That is a different concept, maybe in one of my future lectures. Uh, the optimum you hear this word all the time, has to do with the purpose of the drawing. We haven't got to the purpose yet, okay? Not in this lecture. But uh, a right angle has, uh, really uh, speaks of trade-off. Trade-off. Some of this and some of this, or uh, not too much of this extreme versus not too much of this extreme. It's a very important uh, concept which is, in fact, the mother of all design that functions. And with uh, all that uh, material, I would not call it baggage, with all that ammo, now we can, uh, as remember, we proceeded from a level of ignorance. I pretended that I knew nothing about anything except my freedom of uh, taking slices and uh, looking at the drawing that uh, emerges. So now, um, what about um, Thales theorem? Well, here's the triangle that's uh, inscribed in the circle with one of its side, sides being a diameter. And because that is a diameter, it means that uh, there's a circle. I'll get to the circle in a second. That also has to be discovered. And it had been discovered. Um, and uh, that circle has a center called O. And from that center, I can draw uh, lines called radii in all directions. Of interest here is the, radii, the radius OA. And after I draw the dashed line, I discover two isosceles triangles. You have them here. One looks smaller. It's uh, AOB. And right next to it, AOC. And an isosceles triangle is uh, isosceles because it has uh, two equal legs. The, and each leg has the length of a radius. This one and this one. And then for the second triangle, 
this radius and then do the other one. And uh, isosceles, of course, means that um, uh, the angle up here is B, the same as this B. This other angle is C because of that C. And then, uh, as the French like to explain, et voila, uh, A, which is the object of the game, we want to figure out how big A should be, is, in fact, the sum of B and C. And then uh, the only thing we knew that was true, sorry, the only thing we knew that was true is that A plus B plus C equals 180. But now we just discovered that A is the same as B plus C. And that means that this sum here is equal to 2A equals 1A, 180. And then uh, from there, A should be 90 degrees forever in, uh, in everything and everywhere. That is uh, the, uh, the proof of the theorem. I don't know whether this is the way uh, um, um, Thales' theorem is, uh, is proven in the famous book of, uh, of Euclid, which is Elements, which came uh, roughly 600 years after uh, Thales. I have the book, uh, Elements, and I decided not to look in the book to see <laughs> how how uh, the uh, ancient have uh, proven this truth. I decided to do it my own way. But I'm not finished. Uh, I, I, um, I have to show you something that, um, that uh, occurred to me during the night. Every time I give a lecture, say the next morning, I discover that I cannot sleep because I'm, uh, I'm giving the lecture when I'm uh, uh, allegedly asleep. Okay? <laughs> That's right. So uh, I, uh, it, uh, speaking of the circle, which is something I'll discover very soon, uh, Thales theorem empowers me to uh, to discover a technique to draw a circle. In uh, in uh, uh, in the art of making drawings, mm -hmm. there is an instrument that works like this. It uh, has a right angle here, which I will uh, indicate that way. I don't know the name of this uh, instrument in English. I know it in German. It's a ecke, which means corner. I, uh, it's a piece of, these days, a piece of plastic, uh, which I have in my bag. I don't know where it is. Fine. So I have a, a, a rigid uh, uh, triangle, and uh, it's in my bag. Next. I. On a piece of wood, I, uh, I uh, bang two nails. These are the uh, so-called the B and C. Yeah. And, yeah. So that's the diameter of the uh, circle I don't have. And then I take my, uh, my uh, let's call it uh, template, and I put it here. Uh, let's, I'll assume this is much bigger than necessary, so here it is. And that means this is point A. And then what I do is I rotate the template while making sure that these sides are touching B and C. And the consequence, obviously, is that A will describe the arc of a circle. You see? I don't know if anybody came up with this joke, but uh, that's what I thought last night. <coughs> Next, uh, after all the success, in other words, uh, we discovered that uh, the wine is good. Uh, what else could we do with it? I, I arrived unwittingly at the concept of fundamental. The meaning of the word fundamental. You hear this all the time. It is, first of all, it's just like, well, the definition is uh, fundamental is uh, a, uh, more basic, is a uh, most frequently found features a feature in a more complicated uh, construct. It could be an edifice or a language or anything else. So um, 
fundamental is at, at, at the base because it comes from fundus in Latin, which means bottom. At bottom, which is also the base, there is this. Like I said here, the fired brick in a Roman building 2,000 years ago um, is the same brick. It came from the same you know, <coughs> brick firing a yard. But the, the buildings are bigger or smaller, diverse, beautiful, ugly, doesn't matter. The point is that in them, there is this uh, fundamental uh, element. And the triangle is fundamental because we find it uh, without effort in more complicated drawings. In this case, a regular hexagon. A hexagon is a uh, construct of uh, six equilateral triangles. You know right away uh, basically everything that uh, Hamad drew here in this particular picture because the angle around this point is 360. That means the angle of uh, one of these triangles is 60. Equilateral also means equal angle, so you have 60, 60, 60 everywhere, which means that the obtuse angle of the hexagon, regular hexagon, is 120. You see, uh, by doing this kind of uh, obvious, obvious uh, calculation, uh, you're not boring yourselves. You're actually developing dexterity in, in your brain, dexterity. You compare the new image with things that you already know, like in dribbling, the, the basketball. Um, that is not boring. That is good for you. So the next time, it will come to you because of dexterity even faster and equally correctly. Here's another example of this. Uh, the triangle is fundamental in geometry. Remember, fundamental means what is repeated the most. So I'm repeating this line. Uh, as much as, I, as, as you can absorb, because <coughs> four isosceles triangles make a square. Uh, you got the idea, 90, 90, 90, 90, and then here 45 and 45 make uh, right angles in the four corners. So you get, you get, you get the drift uh, that's uh, becoming apparent. But the images can get uh, to be uh, more challenging. Here is the uh, regular pentagon. Pentagon in the Greek means five uh, angles, five corners. Pentagon means five corners. And yes, a triangle is fundamental in geometry. Uh, here, you can figure out uh, all these angles, starting from the center, you divide 360 by five, and then you reason what uh, these uh, armpits would be from the rule that angles add up, add up to 180 in, a, in one triangle. And uh, why not uh, um, push your luck? How about a very large number of isosceles uh, triangles in a bigger thing? Here, only two of them shown. It's like a pizza with very, very slender slices. Well, that pizza is a round pizza. So you're discovering the circle. The circle is a regular polygon with, some would like to say, infinite number of, of isosceles triangles uh, in it. And uh, how big is infinite? As big as your imagination, meaning your freedom. Meaning a, uh, a draftsman in a hurry would make a, uh, a pizza that looks more like a hexagon. One who is trying to impress uh, the comedian will make one uh, more like this, you see? Even though no one in his right mind would make a, uh, uh, would imagine a round pizza made out of triangles. But this is the direction in which the unbiased, uh, unbiased uh, thinker uh, proceeds. So to, uh, to put these uh, more complicated drawings together, we, we detect a direction in time from the simpler to the more and more complicated, meaning from left to right, because there's no question about the fact that uh, right angles are e easier to draw than 
the, uh, the neighboring extremes, uh, I could and uh, never mind because the extremes are very, very diverse. But this is unique. So from the unique right angle, you go to the right. And uh, in that direction of adding more and more isosceles triangles, you discover in a second way in today's lecture, the, uh, the physics behind infinity, which is here in your ability to imagine what next. You discover the concept of regular polygons. Poly uh, polygons are images made of uh, many angles. Polygonus means many angles, but, um, or many sides. But when those features are the same around the dial, then those are regular polygons. So you discover them through these examples. <clears throat> and once again, you discover the power that comes from your own freedom to, uh, to venture into the unknown. And uh, I wrote here at the uh, beginning of the slide, which is the answer to uh, how to discover. Well, by questioning, questioning what is, questioning everybody and everything. Once again, do not be afraid. I notice that you're afraid to question here. <laughs> Maybe you'll uh, ask a few things when I say goodbye. Um, it is useful, useful to question, uh, both when uh, you're right and when you're wrong. When you're wrong, the, the lesson you learn is uh, not to be too sure, which is also known as uh, to exhibit humility in, uh, in the realm of uh, of uh, creativity, humility, uh, you may be wrong, okay? But it's important to try. And uh, act as if you are free, uh, even though you were not encouraged to act that way. So this is why those who have not been, been encouraged are urged or well advised to practice acting, uh, being free, as opposed to continuing as sheep. And, um, and now I end with, uh, again, during the night, I remembered uh, uh, a statement of this particular uh, advice, which I received when I was a junior at MIT. It was from um, a professor of electrical engineering uh, who was actually teaching the course on psychology. Imagine this. Hmm. Why they picked him to teach psychology? First of all, he was an unusual professor, but his uh, research on, uh, in electrical engineering was about the behavior of, uh, of uh, frogs. So his office was full of uh, containers, full of frogs that have the habit of escaping uh, and invading the whole, uh, the whole corridor overnight. And he said, to, I, I will never forget, to, there are 200 students in the auditorium. Each of you is one point in space. You are one point of view, your point. One point may not seem like much, but no one is qualified to displace you. Yes, and he said, never forget. And when I heard that, I saw immediately that this man placed the individual, meaning the point, meaning you, in geometric terms. And Geometry, as in my lecture today, is clear, true, yes, it's uh, reproducible, and for that reason it is irrefutable. And um, the individual is, if you study the, uh, where we come from, is the, in the foundation of Western civilization. This is not to be overlooked. To, uh, to get to know more, uh, here are my, uh, I wrote many books, but these are the four that uh, are for the general public, uh, chronologically. And today's material uh, is actually original, except that uh, the, 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 um, the most recent uh, uh, version of the flavor, as uh, Mr. Luddy indicated, is uh, this uh, freedom and evolution and uh, time and beauty.